If you want to hear about the most successful business consultant we've ever met, you've tuned into the right interview. Phil Wicks has been able to build his own successful business consulting business, help many clients and get the lifestyle that he's always wanted. This interview was originally recorded in April of 2017 and now we've added an update on how Phil is going at the end. Welcome to Everything Business Consulting, a podcast dedicated to business consulting success. It's for those of you who already are a business consultant and you want to improve your skills, are an accountant and want to offer consulting services, or you may be an ex-corporate who wants to get out of the rat race and become a self-employed business consultant. Or you may have owned a business before and you now want to use the skills that you've learned to help others in business. I'm David Thexton. And I'm Julius Bloom. Everything Business Consulting is brought to you by ConsultX, a global business consulting company that has everything you require to become a successful business consultant or offer consulting services in your existing professional firm. If you'd like to find out more, visit consultx.com. Hi Phil, welcome to our interview section. Phil's based in the Waikato in New Zealand and has been with Consultex for around about three to four years. Phil, are you fired up and ready to go? Yeah, David. Uh, how, how are you going? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Good, excellent. You've been involved with business consulting for some time now and you, you've been our consultant of the year a couple of times and uh, number one consultant a few times. Please tell us um, what you were doing before you became a consultant. Most of my background was uh, corporate agriculture and I guess if I look at the last 15 years, those roles would have included being a national sales manager, um, I was a marketing manager I was a manager of international and then I was a general manager based in the US. So I guess a fairly sort sort of standard sort of corporate career. And you were in the US when we um when we met each other, weren't you? That's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I was in I was there for four years and I had already decided that when I came back to New Zealand I wanted to start my own business. I just wasn't quite sure. Uh, what that would be at that stage, although I, I was wanting to do consulting. That's great. So what attracted you to business consulting? What attracted me to business consulting was, well, I guess I'd wanted to do it. I had thought about it for quite quite some time. I felt that I had a, because I had a fairly strong career around people, leadership, marketing and sales, uh, and also managing businesses, I felt like I had a, a really good background a diverse enough background that I could actually offer offer something to small to medium sized businesses. Well, that certainly proved the case because you've done very very well. Could you tell our listeners what was your experience like in your first six months as a business consultant back in New Zealand? Generally, it was pretty good. I think when I first started, you know, perhaps in the first couple of months, I thought it might be a little bit easier than it actually was. But then once I started getting businesses, it flowed on pretty well. So I had a pretty good ex- good experience, I think, starting off considering that I came into a region where I, I hadn't lived before. I had no networks. I had no, uh, you know, no, no people that I really knew. So I had to sort of create my own. So I think from that point of view, it wasn't too bad. You know, I think I did reasonably well starting off. It was, it was, um, I had a pretty good attitude, I think, and I was pretty determined to succeed. I think that that sort of helped. Tell our listeners how you acquired clients in the beginning and, and compared to how you get them now. Yeah, that's that's quite an interesting one because, like I said, I didn't have a network of people, so I, I relied very heavily on telemarketing and business breakfast, the BNI system to begin with. And that worked pretty well in the sense that I was good at converting leads so as long as I got the leads from telemarketing, then I, I converted them really well. If I look at how now, uh, things have changed a little bit. I probably get most of my business from referrals, strategic relationships. Just started doing some seminars, which which is helping as well, and a little telemarketing. Uh, of course, I'm creating leads for myself, but also for my consultants. Because you've got a firm. I didn't mention that at the start. How many people have you got in your firm now? Four. Four, okay. 
and we were just chatting earlier on they're doing quite well um you've got two brand new ones i think haven't you yes i have yeah they're just starting off that's good so you've used the business success program right from the start could you describe to our listeners the benefit that you've gained from it Probably the biggest benefit is, is you got all you know you got all a whole lot of information in one place. Uh, it's got a very professional client acquisition process. The diagnostic is a very very good tool, and and it's great in regards to ongoing consulting, so measuring client pro, uh, progress and communicating objectives, that sort of thing. I find that everything sort of works flows really well together. The first eight weeks that you work with a client are very important. So the business success programs work very, very well with that. The Consultex program moving forward has, I find, very useful in regards to actually setting objectives for clients on a, on a sort of a week-by-week -week basis and just keeping a record of our progress, how well we're doing, and just, just sort of mapping, looking back and saying, OK, we're actually accomplishing things. It's a very good reference tool in that respect. That's great. Uh, I, I started building it in 2005, as you know, and and it was uh, I, I built it for me because I had so many clients that um, I had trouble stuffing them all into my head. And I felt like I needed to have a, a program that gave me a track to run on. So I, I kind of built the, I suppose, the skeleton for it and then the rest of the people in the network and, of course, our clients they all kind of contributed, and that's that's the the product that we've got uh, got today, and it continues to be improved. Could you tell our listeners uh, how many clients you have today, and very quickly what type of businesses they are, so they can get a bit of a feel for for who you're working with? Okay, I generally probably for the last sort of six or seven months, I've been working between sort of eleven and fourteen clients at any one time, and within that group, they would range. In regards to turnover from from startups right up to sort of, uh, I think the biggest company I'm working with at the moment turns around turns over about uh, six million seven million dollars, and they range from, well, oh, there's, 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 a, there's a huge range actually. There's there's retail businesses, there's an online business, there's quite a lot of trades. So I have a builder, I have a plumber that I work with, I have a powder coating company that I've been working with for about a year and a half now. Yeah. I have a joiner that I've been working with for probably close to three years, I guess now, or, or at least two and a half years. I've worked with a worked at a, a branding rebranding for a real estate agent that was that was a that was a project that was a six month project. Uh, I work with a the largest rental company in Hamilton, um, so there's quite a variation. You know, I do. I, I find that the the trades probably usually will make up about sixty percent, seventy percent of my business, and then you'll have a few of these other bits and pieces that will uh, be in there. Just going back to where we we're talking a few minutes back about acquiring clients, uh, you're moving into a phase now, or you have been for the last year or so, where you're getting a lot of referrals, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'd say that probably. If I look back on the last six or seven months, I would say that it, new, any new business coming through, eighty percent of it would have been referral business. Yeah, that's that's um, it's kind of a hump you've got to get over. I think you've got to get to about six or eight clients before referrals start coming in, or you can start chasing them. Yes, yeah, so I think I think it's just a matter of yeah, obviously you have to be working with enough clients long enough for them to then get the benefits and for them to, to then recommend you to other people. And then what often happens, and, and like I've had a couple of referrals from an accountancy firm who I've actually got a partnership with now, but but when I got those referrals, I didn't actually know where they were coming from. And that's, that was just due by a chance that I was working with a couple of their own clients and they were, they were very happy with the progress. But now I've got a relationship with them. So, yeah, it is a hump that you've got to go through a little bit. You've got to create, you know, you've got to, you know, it's like anything, any business, you've got to do the hard yards in the first sort of year. And then things start to sort of flow on once you've been working with clients for a while, you've made progress. And then you start to sort of reap the benefits of that. Going back to the people that are in your firm, uh, some of them have grown um, surprisingly quite quickly. Do you think that's due to the fact that you're able to steer them in the right direction? 
Yeah, I think that's a really big factor. I mean, when I started, there obviously wasn't anybody else in the area who could guide me, whereas the people that are coming into the firm, they're getting a, a they have a lot more chance of success in the sense that. I've learned all the thing, all the wrong things, so, so to speak. I've already <laughs> learned all that sort of stuff, and also, you know, there is a bit of help of clients and actually doing the odd session with some of their clients as well. So that's, their clients themselves know there's a, a bigger network and a bigger support base. And as a group, obviously, we contribute to ideas together. And I get some, I get some good things from them as well. You know, I'm, yeah. I'll take ideas from anybody's. And uh, so I do think that uh, I'm creating a firm model where at, yeah. um, there's a, there's a, a, I think I've got a quite a good sort of success sort of progress line that they can go through. Okay. Now on the negative side of things, everything's not, um, a ray of sunshine. Can you tell our listeners about perhaps one or two client failures that you've had and and um, whether you could have do, done something if you had your time again? Maybe you could have. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I think I think generally I've had a pretty good run. There's prob- probably, probably a couple that I, I could have worked with. Well, I, I was had worked with for quite a long time and I could have worked with even longer I just had trouble getting them to do things, and I think in the early days I was probably a little bit, I was probably a little bit soft on that. I'm a lot stricter on it now. I, I'm a lot stricter on people completing their objectives. You've got to understand a business from from day to day. Sometimes there'll be certain times, certain weeks where they'll be very, very, very busy. Uh, but I do think it's important that you do keep on pushing the progress. And not only pushing the progress, but also reminding them of the progress that you're actually making. You know, you can make significant changes, positive change to businesses very, very quickly. And I think it's important to occasionally just sort of remind them of some of those changes that they're making. I think also just framing up a business properly, so you're actually framing it up for a long-term type of plan unless you're doing some sort of project and I do do the odd sort of project sort of stuff but I think I've never you know I can't say I, I don't think there'd be anybody I've worked with that would say that they shouldn't have worked with me I had yeah. one client very very early on I'd only been going for a, a couple of months and I'd signed up four businesses then one of them dropped out almost straight away yeah and uh, that was a bit of a shock because I, I didn't understand why but I wasn't that worried about it because I we just the 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 owner was very dour, and I just didn't feel like we we clicked for some reason. So I think um, sometimes some things are beyond, beyond your control. Yeah, I had a couple of clients um, when I was consulting full time, and uh, and we had to part company. Oh, one example was that he sold some shares in his business, and um, one of the conditions of the investor was that um, I had to go. I had to be terminated because he could do everything that I could do. Um, so I lost him, and a year later they were bankrupt. And another one was was where um, I discovered um, for myself, actually, that the the owner of the business was running three companies, and he was... Uh, he had three companies essentially, so he could shuttle GST money through the companies and then pocket it. Um, just for those overseas, GS, GST is a consumption tax in New Zealand and Australia. It might be called something else in Britain. What do they call it in Britain? They call it um, VAT. VAT, that's right, and they probably call it something different in the States. I think they have state taxes, um, which is called a kind of a sales tax. Anyway, he was shuttling the money through, and and I kind of got um, partially wound up in this, and and it, it ended up being a meeting at a coffee shop, and I said, look, I said, you've got to stop doing this. I said, um, you, you need to understand that banks have very sophisticated software, and Pretty soon, he owed the bank about a million dollars. Pretty soon, they're going to be able to, the software will alert them that something weird's going on here. Uh, and I said, you, you, you know, let, let's, let's stop it now and run a legit business. And he refused to do it. So I had to, I, I had to let him go rather than the other way around. So, so can you give us a couple of examples about how you've helped your clients to build a better business? 
Just a couple of quick mini case histories. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, I work with, let's see, a powder coating company, and I've been working with them for about a, about a year and a half, I guess. Uh, that company, it's got a, a owner, or 80% owner who lives offshore, and it's got a general manager who actually runs the company and owns the other 20%, and who will soon be owning uh, probably 40 to 50%. Um, yep. That company was sort of sitting around a turnover of between five and 650000 It It was very profitable at that, but it was had sort of uh, flatlined in the sense that it probably needed to have quite a big change in structure if it was going to, wanting to grow further. Now, we're heading for about $1.1 million this this year, and we've made some, some major changes around, uh, had a very flat leadership structure. It didn't really have any on-site admin, so that's all changed. There's a leadership group there now. There's there's an, a very good admin with the company. The uh, the infrastructure of the company itself has changed. It's got two, it's got two ovens now instead of one, so its its throughput can, is, is almost can almost double. And and so and so we've managed to sort of maintain our profitability while increasing increasing the turnover. And also increasing the leadership, reducing the hours of the general manager, which was a, a really big thing. He was very, very stressed out, and yeah. so that all that has happened. I'm actually seeing seeing the business after this interview today, and it's the busiest time of the year. Now, this time last year, uh, the the business was under a whole lot of pressure. This time, this year, it is busy, but it's nowhere near under the same sort of pressure. So. That business is worth significantly more now than it was a year ago. Yeah, another good. business I work with is a is a plumbing business. It turns over about uh, well, we'll turn over about two million dollars this year. It did about one point six last financial year. When I first came into that business, the main issues were around profitability. Um, it was running at a loss, but it was leaking actually leaking a lot of profit through things that were actually weren't weren't that hard to fix. So we spent the first few months just fixing all those things, and this was things around stocks and job cards and, and, and employee efficiency and those sort of things. And we got that company changed very, very quickly. The, the, the monthly profitability changed very quickly, and uh, and the efficiency changed, and as a result, we've also started to increase the turnover as well. So we're now turning over more, but it's actually profitable turnover and and uh, and the company's in a pretty good place to to grow. Again, uh, we've created a good leadership structure within the company, which has taken a lot of the stress off the owner. And and that's uh, yeah. So that's another example of a company that's going really well. Oh, good. Uh, of course, once you can start measuring the business accurately, you can report back to them these profit improvements, can't you? Yes. Yeah, well, that, one of the things I like to try and do once I've been working, and it does depend a little bit on the size of the business, but if you've created a bit of a, a leadership team, is making sure you you do have sort of progress meetings with the leadership team, but also with the owners, making sure you have financial meetings once a month with the owners, so you can actually, so you're always aware of you know of their P and Ls for that month, where the business is going. Yep. So using the Consultex Business Success Program, what's the average lifetime of your clients? Like, What's the longest and what's the shortest? And what's the average? The shortest one would be the one that I mentioned before, which was about two months, but I've, I've hardly, this only happened once and that was right at the beginning. I would have, I've had a couple of, pro, you know, a few project stuff, which has been five or six months, but I'm okay with that sort of thing. That's because you're going in there to do a specific job, you do it and it finishes and then you, you, you move on. I've had, I've got other clients. My longest client, I mean, I've been doing this for just over three years, so so close to three years, three and a half years, close to three and a half years. Yeah. And my longest serving client I've been working with, I think, for three years now, or close to three years. And so I've got a few of those ones that I've been working for three years, or two and a half years, or two years. And but probably on average, I would say, I would say probably about twelve months. About a right. year, on average. Yep. Um, I think what will happen is that average will go up the longer I'm consulting because what will happen is obviously the 40% that's, that I consider the long-term business will probably probably grow. 
but I think I think it's always important to understand that you know you will you will stop consulting with clients for ver- for various reasons, and it's yeah. not necessarily because they they're, they're not pleased with the progress that you've made or anything like that. It could just be simply that they might just feel like they need a break, and you might have been with them for a year and a half or something like that, or they might just feel that they don't need to see you as often. So what I do is if I get into that situation, I generally will put them on a monthly type of program where I'll see them yep. once a month. But I, but, it, but it varies. I mean, I've got other clients who, who just would not do without not seeing me every couple of weeks. And yep. so I think I think the thing to be aware of is is not to come into this thinking you're going to have, you're going to get, you know, 10 clients and you're going to keep them all forever. Is that you'll keep a percentage of them for 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 a lot for a long time, and that percentage will, will probably grow as you get more experienced, and and there'll be but there will be other opportunities that you shouldn't sort of turn down because they might just be for example the real estate agent that I did the rebranding for, yeah that you know that was a that was a, a good opportunity to take good income for the time I did it so but I think in general if I looked at everything on average probably probably about a year. Okay. Um, just for the people who are listening, um, just to uh, um, fill this out a bit more for you, uh, we tend to work uh, long term with business owners um, as opposed to a, perhaps a traditional business consultant who would do project or assignment work and they're kind of in and out in three months, four months, five months. So we target um, to be with them forever. And as Phil said, it doesn't always work out that way, but but that's um, that's what we that's what we try and do. Somebody asked one of our, I think it was Phil uh, Steve Potts the other day, uh, and somebody suggested to him that they might like to take a break, and he came back with some sort of an answer about the All Blacks, and he talked about the All Blacks coach, and he says now that the All Blacks have won 18 games in a row and they're the world champions again, uh, do you think that they should sack their coach? And the business owner says, point taken. Did you hear him talk about that? I've heard that before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can you tell our listeners a bit about your lifestyle as a consultant today compared to normal nine-to-five employment? Yes, I would say that it's definitely better. And I won't listen. I'll, I'll, I'll take the earphones out while you talk to the listeners. Okay. Yeah, I'd definitely say it's, it's it's better in the sense that I have a lot more freedom. That doesn't mean I don't work long hours sometimes, because I do. But at mm. the same time, though, the hours that I choose, um, I try to take Fridays off when I can. And yep. that means I have a bit of a long long weekend. That might, it might mean my Wednesday might be a, a pretty long day or something like that. Uh, I, I find that if getting clients onto a fortnightly program works really well. You can look after a lot of businesses and still keep it and maintain a pretty a pretty good lifestyle. I don't have the same sort of stress that I probably used to have in corporate. I'm reliant on myself. I'm not so reliant on other people. So from that point of view, I think, I think it's, it's definitely more enjoyable. Now, I really like the lifestyle that I have. Now, I think, I think it's... Um, you know, you'll have some busy days and you'll have some quieter days. And I, I just think the fact that you have a bit more control of it, what those days will be does make for a for fairly good sort of lifestyle. Yeah, I found that. In fact, I'm sitting in my home office now looking out at all the green grass and trees of South Auckland. So yeah, your office is a bit, bit like that. You've got a home office, haven't you? Yep, and I'm looking out over yeah. some green paddocks as well. Oh, here you go. Beats sitting in a car on the uh, southern motorway, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, for this today's a pretty good, pretty good example. I I caught up with one of my consultants this morning. This is a bit of a lighter day today, I must admit. But I caught up with one of my consultants this morning. I had my powder coating company at, at uh, was meant to see them at one, but um, they couldn't make it at one. And I suggested that we catch up maybe just after at five. So I'll catch up with him for probably they're very very busy at the moment, but I'll catch up with him for an for an hour or so after five. And but it's, yeah, it's made made for a relatively relaxing day. But it's not. But like I said, yeah. not every day is like that by any stretch of the imagination. No, but the, you use the right word control. Like you're you're 100 percent in control of your time, and you can work late one night and take the next day off if you want to do that. 
So could you give our listeners a little bit of advice uh, because there's thousands of people out there listening to this and uh, the podcast is called Everything Business Consulting. So we're talking to people who want to become a business consultant. What would your advice be to them on the best path to entering the consulting profession and why? Well, I think that that's a really interesting question, David, because I had exactly the same question when I was looking at consulting. So I, I made the decision I wanted to be to get involved in consulting, but at that stage I didn't quite know how to what I was going to do. Was I going yeah. to go in and just try and do it myself? And I came to the conclusion that if I really wanted to have the best chance of su- succeeding, that I wanted to wanted to actually get involved in something that already had systems working, and also yeah. with people that were already successful. Yeah. And so I actually did quite a lot of research and I kept on coming back um, to uh, this program and I liked the way, I, sp- I particularly liked the way the first eight eight or nine weeks worked and how you could find out all the information you needed about the business. So having that formula, I think, was, was very, very important. And also having, I think, now too, having people around you as well that can actually, you know, you can have your own business but have support, I think it's also very important as well. Um, it's almost like the best of both worlds. So, yeah. uh, but I definitely think having an available, having a system that you can actually follow is very, very valuable. And and to be perfectly honest, to try and do that yourself would cost a lot of money. But it cost us millions to get to where we are, and um, yeah, it did cost a lot of money, and you mentioned earlier about trial and error, like probably half of what we did was was error, uh, and we've eliminated all that, so that's what people are getting into if they decide to come with us. To close the interview, can you give our, give our listeners a couple of gold nuggets of advice that will help them in their consulting career once they've become a consultant? Uh, yes, I think I think you need to create a really good client acquisition plan and system. I think that's really important, especially when you first start. You have to be prepared to actually go and hunt your business. And I think having a really good system long term that provides you with clients, your aim is to consult with clients as long as you can. But I still think you always have to keep the client acquisition thing ticking in the background. Because you'll have business that will businesses that will sell, um, you know, you'll have uh, a whole lot of different things that that can that can happen, like the examples that you gave and the examples that I've given. And so, I think having a really good client acquisition program and honing your skills with client acquisition is really important. And the biggest skill for that is is probably around making sure that you listen when you first meet potential. Uh, potential clients and you listen to the issues that they've got and you show empathy and I think that's that's really important the second yeah. thing I think is also very important is that to your aim as a consultant is to improve the business from say from that point of view you're a consultant as opposed to a, to a coach and I always call myself a, a consultant in the sense that I'm there to improve the business however the coaching aspects of what you do uh, are some of the things that will actually keep your business long term. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier when you're talking about things that actually really that you've learned, because understanding people and understanding that sometimes you have to lift people up, you have to uh, you have to deal with a few personal issues that people have got, and 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 that 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 coaching aspect is what will help you keep clients for a long, long time. Your focus should definitely be on on improving the business. You're not a rah-rah person, uh, as I call it, but understanding human nature and understanding when people might be stressed and that sort of thing, I think is is a very valuable thing to have. And I think it's, so that coaching aspect is, is important as well. Well, Phil, thank you for that frank and interesting interview, and I'm really sure that our listeners will have gained a lot from it. No problem, David. I hope uh, I hope uh, it, it, that your listeners enjoyed it. Three and a half years on from the original interview, Phil has continued to prove himself as one of the best consultants around. 
David, you recently heard from the man himself. How's he doing? He is doing very well. He now has 22 clients and he's got it honed to absolutely perfection, to use his words. He has more referrals than he can handle. And he told me that when the COVID started to bite early 2020, um, his phone went berserk. Um, and he had people, many, many people, whom he had not been able to to um, turn into a consulting client, ring him, starting to ask for help. So um, I think he's he's locked off his uh, account he can't handle anymore. And he tells me that business is better than ever. Um, and he's also changed things a little bit in that he is consulting in person with his clients once a month and he's making a big use of Zoom by having also one Zoom meeting per month. So he's cutting down on his travel time and he's and he's able to have a more efficient business, basically. Well, yeah, yeah, because he, he doesn't have to drive to these face-to-face meetings, uh, irrespective of the virus. Um, he's able to um, achieve exactly the same amount of, of, uh, of service that he provides by using internet technologies. And that's obviously what's allowed him and, and given him the capacity to get to 22 clients, because that's a... A very hefty number. Well, yes, yes, he's saving the, the, the driving time, he's saving the meeting time, because for some reason, um, doing a Zoom meeting tends to be a bit more condensed than, um, than a face-to-face meeting. Like a fine wine, David, Phil has basically shown that this is a great profession and gets even better with time. Yes, yes, it does. So if you found anything in this interview relevant, we'd love a positive review, comment, or thumbs up. We've now jumped onto Spotify. If you can hit the subscribe button there as well, that does some fantastic things and allows us to reach more people with our message. You can connect with us on all major social platforms, including YouTube. Just search for Everything Business Consulting. Everything Business Consulting is brought to you by ConsultX. It's a global business consulting company that has everything that you require to become a successful business consultant or to offer consulting services in your existing professional firm. If you'd like to find out more, come visit us at consultex.com.